Hello again and welcome to uh, our next unit, compositing. And so in this uh, video, uh, we're going to look at some of the kind of introductory ways that we can work with different photos and composite them together. Um, we'll look at two specific uh, ways that we'll be compositing images. Um, this is going to be uh, both, uh, we'll be using both the um, panoramic merge tool or the photo merge tool in Photoshop to create panoramas uh, and we'll be talking about it a little more in depth and we'll also be using um, some various tools uh, to do some head swaps in Photoshop and so uh, these are two real main ways um, that people use um, Photoshop to composite images together um, like I said this is going to be kind of an introductory week or an introductory class on uh, compositing and then we get to kind of step up our game next week and uh, take a look at doing some bit a bit more serious compositing and uh, I think we'll have a lot of fun with today and next week as well but like I said today's gonna be kind of a, a bridge stepping stone for us um, to kind of dip our feet uh, so to speak um, and get our feet wet a little bit with uh, with photo or, or excuse me with compositing um, so with that said, let's take a look first. We'll break these uh, videos up into two different parts. Uh, this first part here will talk specifically about uh, Photoshop's uh, photo merge tool and just how to use it. So the first thing uh, that we actually need to do anytime we're going to create a panoramic is actually obviously take the photographs. And so um, I've gone ahead and done that already. I've got six different photos here um, that I've taken. And uh, they're kind of consecutively taken, um, obviously, of this river scene here. And you can kind of see the way that they were taken there. Um, and so when you're taking the panoramics, we're not going to have you guys be taking any photos right now. But um, if you were to do this, um, obviously, there's uh, all these new crazy smartphones, right, that um, have the, the really cool pano apps on them. And they do an okay job, but we can do a lot better here in Photoshop, especially... Um, with image quality taking in these uh, with real SLR cameras. So uh, if you're going to be doing this with an SLR camera, uh, you need to kind of roughly make sure that you're overlapping each photograph by roughly about 25%. So about a quarter of the photograph, a little give or take, needs to be um, kind of in the previous photograph. So each photograph is overlapping itself, and this really gives Photoshop a uh, something to kind of um, analyze the photograph with and align the two together or align uh, the two sides together. Um, obviously we're going to be using more than two photographs. So anyways, um, make sure that you're going to be um, stacking photos or overlapping them as you take them. And then it's really important to, before you even get to this step, to edit the photos so they're all the same. Um, this is a lot easier if you're shooting on manual mode with your camera uh, because obviously the exposure and everything is going to be consistent uh, in every photo because uh, you're not going to be changing the settings. But if you're shooting in an automatic or with a point-and-shoot camera, it's very likely that each picture could be slightly different. And it's important that you go through and edit the photos first so that the exposure and white balance and all the other kind of things are uh, are similar in each photograph. So then Photoshop uh, will be able to do a better job at putting or stitching these photos together. So I've already gone ahead and done that. And if you're curious, um, I use a program called uh, Lightroom. Um, and this is a look at Lightroom. Um, and if you're a photo student, uh, we, be, uh, we do use this. We'll be going over that uh, in the photo curriculum. So if you're interested in that and you're a photo student, don't worry. We'll be obviously digging into Lightroom for you um, in the future. And if you're not a photo student and Lightroom interests you, um, you can talk to some of the photo instructors uh, and possibly get into uh, that class. So anyways, um, you can also work in Photoshop, obviously, to get the photos to um, be uniform. But once you're at that point and you've got your uniform photographs uh, ready to go, um, go ahead and uh, we'll just shift-click here to open up our series of images that we'll have in our panoramic. Um, and uh, since I've got them selected, I'll go to Open, Open With, and into Photoshop. Obviously, you could just drag these into Photoshop as well. Uh, but here we are, here they are in Photoshop, um, and you can see that I've got them open all now as individual files. They're not um, all put together on the same canvas, which is an important step when you make sure they're all in individual files here. Uh, and then from this point, we can go to uh, File, Automate, and so let me talk a little bit about this. So 
Photoshop has some different uh, techniques here in the Automate tab as well as under the scripts that allow us to kind of automate or speed up a particular workflow. And um, So obviously we could do this in Photoshop and we could composite these photos together manually, uh, but it's probably not going to be as good and it's definitely not going to be as fast as if we let Photoshop help us along the way. And so we go to Automate and you can see there's all these different options. We can make contact sheets these ways. Um, as well as all these other things, HDR, lens correction, all these other ones. But the one we're looking for is all the way at the bottom, and that's Photo Merge. Um, so it's obviously called that for a reason. We're going to be merging photos together here. And so, again, File, Automate, and then Photo Merge uh, is what we want. And you'll see that it brings up um, our Photo Merge dialog box here. Uh, and there's a few things we need to take a look at uh, when talking about this. And so... We've got, uh, first, we've got the layout, which we'll talk about in a second. We've got source files, um, and it says use files or, or a particular folder. We don't really need to change this. We'll leave these as files. And then in here as well, we've got browse and add open files. And so because I had you open the files in the Photoshop, all we need to do is just really simply click right there. It adds all of our open files there. We do also have the ability, if we didn't want to open the files, you could also just hit browse and navigate and select the files there that you want to open. Either way is really fine, doesn't really matter. Um, I find it personally easier just to open them up and then hit add open files, but either way works the same, so it's not too important. Um, at the bottom here, you can see that blend images together is selected. That's really, we should have that selected, and with that, Photoshop will create um, layer masks uh, on each image to kind of blend these together for us, so it saves us a lot of time. So you can see by default that's checked. Um, vignette removal um, is on there and so each photograph um, as you take it lenses different lenses um, give different amounts of vignette naturally and so if you're with a lens shooting with a lens that has really bad vignetting um, because it's maybe a cheap lens or a really wide angle lens you might want to choose to check this but in our images we don't really have that uh, it's a really high quality lens that I'm using and it's not super wide so the vignetting on it isn't really bad um, so I can leave that blank um, geometric distortion correction. Again, this would be if I'm shooting with a super wide angle lens and things are um, really distorted because of the wide angle, I could choose to correct that as well. But again, I shot this with a 50 millimeter lens, which for those of you that are photo students or into photography know that a 50 millimeter lens does not distort too much. So I don't need to worry about that. But if I was shooting with a really wide angle, that's an option you could be doing. Uh, and then finally, content aware fill transparent areas. I'm going to leave that blank for now, but I'll show you um, why it's there in, in just a minute. And so uh, that could be something you maybe want to check um, on a regular basis, but maybe not. So we'll take a look in just a minute at that. Um, and so then here we're left with the different layout options. And so you can see we've got auto, perspective, cylindrical, spherical, collage, and reposition. And these all do uh, fairly different things, except for obviously auto. And so let's talk about what those do. So um, in the auto one, obviously, Photoshop analyzes the source images and uh, tries to determine the best option out of the rest of these to merge your photos together. Um, typically speaking, Photoshop will use probably uh, perspective a, a lot of times, uh, or spherical um, and cylindrical. These are the three that Photoshop will typically use when you select auto, but typically it's perspective. Um, so leaving on auto is usually your best bet, but sometimes Photoshop will mess things up and uh, you'll need to go in there and pick one uh, yourself. And so it's important to kind of just talk about what the dif different ones do. So this one here, perspective, uh, this creates a composition uh, by designating one of the source images to the center. So it looks and kind of analyzes the photos, picks one for the center, and then it stretches and skews all the other images to kind of fit around it. which you can kind of see by looking at the picture here, it designates the one to the center and all the ones around it and beside it, it skews and stretches to kind of fit alongside those. Um, cylindrical here is best used for typically really wide panoramic. So if you have a lot of images in a panoramic and it's really wide, um, this results in a look of kind of an unfolded cylinder um, and it's typically the best for, uh, like I said, really wide panoramics. And you can kind of, again, get the idea here uh, idea here of what it's doing. Your pictures help. Um, spherical 
uh, is typically best for uh, full 360 degree panoramic. So if you shot in a complete circle here, uh, it's the best for something like that. Uh, the images are typically mapped then on the inside of an actual sphere, if you kind of imagine that, and then created into and stitched into um, a full image. These are typically used, you see them online, I'm sure, um, for uh, like Google Maps, uh, the street level views, uh, do something similar to this. Uh, but you can see these, people will use these for uh, also for the uh, virtual tours of um, different areas, whether it's inside of a house or I think the state parks are doing this now as well, um, giving virtual tours with things like this. So um, these spherical ones are pretty cool. And uh, they're typically used, like I said, in animations, multimedia, things like that, giving virtual tours. Um, and then collage is one that we'll be using today uh, later on for an assignment. But the collage is pretty neat. It only changes the rotation and scale and then overlaps the images. Um, so you get kind of this choppy, chunky look uh, with collage. Um, and then finally, reposition um, does just that. It, it only changes the alignment of the particular photographs here so that they um, align as best as possible. Um, the only difference between collage and reposition, obviously, is that in collage, it will actually skew and uh, change the size and alignment of the photos that way. So those are the different ones. Typically, you're going to be using auto. Today, we will also be using collage to create a different look. Um, but with auto selected, um, our files loaded, we can go ahead now and hit OK. And we'll let Photoshop chug away and do its work. It's working still. And there we go. You can see, so it's put these images together. It's done really a pretty great job here at putting these together. Um, if you zoom in, and it's typically a good idea to, uh, to do so, if you zoom in, um, and then scroll around the image and just make sure there's no areas that uh, are real funky or chopped up um, and there, there really isn't uh, any here. It's done a really nice job for us this time. Uh, but had there been some chopped up areas, this would be where you go in and you can see that it's created a layer mask here. When we do photo merge, it always, like we said, creates that uh, layer mask for us. You can go on these layer masks and modify them uh, just like we looked um, looked at it in the last unit and uh, then you can kind of uh, manually blur these photos together um, changing the layer masks and so if there were some of those choppy areas this is where you would take care of it right now um, from this point though you can see we've got these blank areas uh, around the image and so that checkbox that we looked at before that said uh, like fill blank areas with content to where fill or said something along those lines, um, that would try and analyze the surrounding pixels and then uh, insert what it thinks uh, is a good fill for that area. We can do this manually now as well. Um, easier to just do the checkbox. The problem is that it doesn't usually do too good of a job. If it's, um, you know, some some areas like this around the edge or a sky, it does pretty good, but areas like these with these random trees, uh, it doesn't do so good. It gets pretty chunky and it doesn't work uh, real well. Um, but you can experiment with that checkbox if you just want to see what it looks like. Uh, but the next tool that we need to look at now is actually the crop tool. And so it's been living up here. We've seen it probably uh, in, in the Photoshop uh, toolbar there as we've been working up to this point. But Basically, it's really straightforward. We can click on the crop tool, and then it gives us our little photo corners in here that we can drag from. Um, and all we're going to do is simply just click and drag to crop that photo in uh, so that there's no more uh, of that blank space. We're basically constraining the crop to just the image file itself or the, pixel in the uh, pixels in the image. Uh, so it should look like something like that and then just simply go up here and hit the checkbox. Um, there are these other tools in here with the crop tool. Um, cropping is typically not done in Photoshop anymore, so there's not too much to go over, but there's different ratios here, um, aspect ratios for photographs that you can decide to click on. Um, I think more often than not, people are actually gonna be just going into the crop tool when we use it in Photoshop and just dragging it manually. Uh, so that is probably the most um, realistic option uh, that I would recommend for you guys. Uh, but anyways, when we're done here, we'll just go ahead and hit the checkbox 
and you can see our photo is cropped in. I did, however, miss a little chunk, and so let me drag my crop tool back out, and I need to drag it down just a smidgen more, something like that, and I'll hit OK. Uh, and now I can see that I have removed all of that blank edge all the way around, and I'm left with this really nice panoramic image uh, of this river. All there would be left to do now is to simply uh, merge this down and save it. So remember the quick command to merge all visible, we've talked about it before, is Shift Command E. It'll merge all visible layers there. And then we can just simply save this out, file uh, and save as, and we would just simply save this as a finished JPEG image then. Um, and so that's a look at uh, creating a, a standard panoramic image. Um, X out of these here. Uh, and let's take a look now at doing um, some head swaps. And actually, uh, I'm going to hold true to what I said in the beginning, and uh, I'm going to save the head swaps for the next video. So if you want to see the head swaps, which I know you do, uh, go ahead and, and uh, click over and watch the next video now.